Hello there friends, how are you doing today? Today, I thought it would be interesting to take a quick look over why stuff has been banned in community competitive, as well as take a look at the kind of history of whitelists and how we've ended up at where we are today. I'm going to briefly cover the history of the Sixers whitelist, starting all the way back as early as possible in etf 2 l 6v6 Season 1, played all the way back in 2007. If people really like this video, I'd be happy to make a similar, about probably a lot shorter, video covering Highlander. To begin, a whitelist in TF2 is just a list of weapons stored on the text file of the server that define what items are allowed to be used. Anything that's not on this list is considered banned. Both competitive Highlander and Sixes use whitelists. In fact, it's very rare you'll ever play with one outside of special kind of test cups that are held on occasion. Of course, the game didn't launch with any alternate weapons. Everyone just played with stock. The only real custom stuff people had to worry about was just disabling random crits, and all servers, from what I could see, tried to play with the TF True plugin to handle these, which still exists today, and, uh, well, at the time it did break a lot from updates, kind of seemed to handle most of the mess people needed. While the first update to add custom weapons was the Gold Rush update in April 2008, the first mention I could find of the site even considering banning weapons was for the Pyre update in June later that year. I even managed to find the original forum thread from 10 years ago, with people discussing stuff like the flare gun or the new air blast mechanic, which is pretty weird to look back at now they've been solid parts of the game for so long. Now, I don't want to go over literally every post on every weapon that's ever been added, so to keep this video short, I want to quickly cover the history of the Sixers whitelist. For the longest time, the whitelist was incredibly tight. Only a few weapons were allowed, such as the Ubersaw, the Crits Creek, the Boston Basher, the Gunboats, the Equalizer, and the Pain Train. This is because, at the time, it was seen that those weapons were just going to be used. Weapons which shouldn't make much difference, like the Wrench Side Grades, or the useless weapons like the Sun on a Stick, weren't whitelisted because they were pointless. No one was going to use them anyway, so why complicate things? It seemed pretty nice to be able to know exactly what weapons yeah, could be in play at any time, you know? So, what was a good reason to ban something other than just for the fact that it's useless? Typically, there's been two main schools of thought as to why something should be banned. This is a bit of an oversimplification, of course, but basically, a weapon can either be overpowered or mechanically broken, you know, or both. Of course, there's more to it than this, but this definition works perfectly fine to show off what I mean. Take a weapon like the old Atomizer, and a weapon like the old Bizarre Bargain. The old Atomizer gave scouts, an already powerful class, free triple jumps, making dodging soldiers and demos completely brain-dead easy. The weapon was, and well, still is, banned for this reason of, in the context of sixes, being overpowered. It gives you a huge benefit for basically no downside. A weapon like the old Bizarre Bargain, or maybe until kind of recently, the Mantreads, are considered mechanically broken. The old Bizarre Bargain used to just break on servers that disabled random crits, so you could have the upside of a really fast charged sniper rifle without any of the downside. Before you used to, if you missed, you lost a kind of charge rate. That just didn't work on low crit servers, the sniper rifle would just constantly get faster and faster with no downside. It was broken. The Mantreads 2, although maybe it's been patched since, there seems to be a bit of debate on this. I think it's been patched though. During the recent Jungle Inferno update, you could kind of merge the gunboats and Mantreads together to get a kind of super shoe that both reduced rocket jump damage from the gunboats and gave you the increased air control while jumping from the Mantreads. As a result, the Mantreads were, and apparently are, still banned. There's nothing wrong, of course, with the Mantreads by themselves, they're not that strong, but they're banned because they're mechanically broken. You can use an exploit on it to give yourself a huge advantage over everyone else. This also happened, maybe still happens, with the sniper's backpacks. You can wear the danger shield and the cozy camper and the razorback at the same time. Again, maybe it's been patched since, but for a long time, since the power update, this has kind of just been a thing. And quickly, if you didn't know, anytime there's a new weapon that's been added or a significant balance change to an item, the leagues like, you know, etf 2 ESEA, they've all instantly banned those weapons from usage until they can be playtested. You know, over time, after a test cup, those weapons might be deemed fine and just unbanned. So if you're wondering why stuff like the jetpack were banned for so long, there you go. People just needed to get used to the weapon existing and learn if there's any bugs associated with them. For example, the gas passer is an awful weapon in the context of sixes, but you can throw it through walls, so it's mechanically broken and as a result is banned. So set your minds to 2016. Up until this point, every Sixers League had essentially their own, unique whitelist. There wasn't much difference between them, admittedly, but they were still different, meaning there was always a little bit of discrepancies between regions about what stuff should be used and what stuff shouldn't be used. Fortunately, this was all fixed in September that year. A bunch of top players around the world all grouped together and decided what was known as the Global Whitelist. This was huge for several reasons. 
One being, well, the obvious, everyone worldwide is now playing the exact same game of sixes, and two, this new global whitelist essentially unbanned almost every weapon in the game. Up until this point, as I said earlier, only a handful of weapons were allowed, you know, those deemed well used and important to the game mode, such as the gunboats being the backbone of an entire playstyle of soldier. The unbanning of weapons was a really interesting move, for a couple of reasons. One was that, it turns out, unbanning a bunch of stuff like the Jag and the Backscratcher had essentially no impact on the game. People were worried they might lead to kind of weird, inverted commas, meme playstyles, inverted commas, and potentially some weird broken synergy, like how the Pyro is, could now potentially play actual Pyro with the combo weapons, rather than just being stuck to the stock flamethrower and axe. We've seen stuff from people like Mookie, you've done weird stuff with like Engineer and off-classing, or people in open divisions being able to run Pyro because, you know, it's their first season, they're not really going to make much of a difference playing Scout or Pyro. But overall, it stayed the same, you're not really seeing any difference across the meta game from a bunch of these weapons being unbanned. It turns out, didn't really have much of an impact. So, bring yourself up to the modern era. You might be wondering why stuff like the Soldier's Whip, the Quick Fix, and until really recently, the Heavy's Gloves of Running Urgently were banned. This can all be boiled down to one very oversimplified reason, but it is a really good reason. They make the game either slower or really boring. Well, what do I mean by this? Surely having more weapon variety is a good thing? Well, not necessarily. The Quick Fix, you know, doesn't seem that strong. The Whip doesn't seem that strong either. So why? Well, all of these current weapons have a reason associated with their ban. Rather than just banning everything except for a few, everything that's banned right now has a reason specified by the admins, by the people involved. But to simplify these important ones, the Quick Fix makes defending really easy, but makes pushing really difficult, leading to long, really, really boring stalemates where neither team can really push without getting a couple of lucky picks. It just slows down the game for no benefit. It makes the game more boring. The whip and the old grew, emphasis on the old gloves are running urgently. Both of these weapons allow a heavy to get to the midpoint, which might sound like fun, people who main heavy. You have to remember though, he's balanced historically around being slow to make up for having the biggest health pool in the game and really, really easy to use damage. This is why Heavy's still used on last holds. He's a really good damage sponge, it's 450 health, and you don't have to run anywhere, so the speed is fairly irrelevant. Allow a Heavy to get to mid, however, with 450 health, the old guru remember, you didn't drain health, you just took mini crits, which you're not going to do on a rollout. If you can get to mid with this health pool, you've essentially got a anti-air tank thing that basically essentially just says to the other team, good luck bombing my medic because if both the soldiers on the other team were to sink every rocket into this heavy to kill him, those soldiers would both die and the, you know, the heavy's team would only lose one player, if that. The heavy, if he's good, could really easily just kill those soldiers mid-air. A minigun is so much easier to kill jumping soldiers with than the scattergun, and the scattergun is what most people use these days to stop soldiers from bombing their medics. Having something that can just tank that much damage and really easily track airborne targets makes heavy really boring to play against, and essentially forces you to run your own leading to a really boring game of just you hide behind your heavy and hope theirs is a bit shit. The current group, however, is allowed because it forces the heavy to drain his own health to a more seemingly suitable level for sixes. You get to mid with around the health of a scout, with the upside of having a minigun. Of course, you don't see people really running heavy much in sixes despite this because scout is just so good. <laughs> but heavy on most maps isn't that important. He does, however, still get a bit of play now. I've seen plenty of teams try to pull a heavy while they're attacking last, because he can make it to there in a decent amount of time, quickly patch himself up, and then you can push with a heavy, and it's a wonderful thing. Quite nice to have a bit of variety, and it's not really boring. Thanks for watching. I hope you actually found this interesting. I found out quite an interesting bit of stuff, just kind of browsing through all these old forum posts and stuff. There was some pretty weird conversations that were going on. But anyway, yeah, let me know if you liked it. I, I quite like doing these kinds of interesting educational videos. And if you want me to, I can easily make a video going over all of the weapons that are currently banned, getting the opinions from actual Prem 6's players as to why they're banned, and make a video on it. You know, I could make a video literally just listing why the Bonk is banned, why the Critical is banned, why the Mad Milk's banned, just in a list, just so you can look at it and be like, ah, oh, that makes sense. Well, that doesn't make sense. I'm going to bring that up with my local government. But anyway, I've gone on. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Do let me know if you enjoyed it. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.